Hello, I'm Odin, and I got a fun request from Reed Pop and Party City. They asked if I could go to a Party City, pick up a few items, and make a full cosplay out of it. Sure, that should be easy. I decided to do a vault suit, an actual vault dweller from the video game Fallout. What I picked up was their vault boy costume. Now, I'm not going to need the mask, but the jumpsuit's a good start for a vault suit. And a vault suit and a vault dweller is going to need a pit boy. Party City has one as well. This is going to get a repaint and some heavy weathering. And for a wasteland weapon, I picked up one of their sledgehammers. We'll add a little bit to this and repaint it, and we should have ourselves a vault dweller. I'm going to have a couple of friends help me and see if we can't get it done in one weekend. In this video, I'm going to take three things from Party City's costume department and customize them into a finished cosplay, plus make an armored shoulder from scratch. So I think I'm going to work on getting the, the sledgehammer taken care of, but would you be so kind as to repaint and weather that? Yes. Thank you, Joe. No problem. First thing I need to do is remove the mold lines in the side of the hammer and sand the whole thing. This roughs up the surface a little. Paint and glue will stick better to the plastic. I went through one of my parts drawers trying to figure out some things to put on it that might be interesting to help it a little bit. And what I want to do is make the rocket propelled sledgehammer. So I got parts to make a rocket on the back, I'll add some spikes in the front, and then decorate up the handle a little bit. I can cut and modify those plastic parts. And I build a good rocket nozzle. These are mostly plumbing parts and a broken lightsaber toy. I'll glue everything down with five minute epoxy and use an old cloth belt as a handle wrap. I have four plastic tubes for my fuel tanks. Blue tape will hold them until the epoxy sets. Then I can carefully stack the nozzle parts and epoxy them in place. In the game, rocket engine sledgehammers have a yellow tank that's off to the side. A screw and epoxy will secure the base, and the tank can be glued in after it's been painted yellow. The activation lever is an old fondue handle, I think. It gets epoxied in place as well. It's been a little bit, and the five minute epoxy has set up to the point that it's pretty much safe to, to handle, which is good. So what I need to do is add a little more detail to it and then I can paint it. I use contact cement and craft foam to make a wrap that goes around the back of the hammer. There's a little plastic tube in there as well. I'm gonna run a wire through it later. I also wrap the tanks because they need to look secure. This by itself is pretty much good enough. I wanna add spikes to the front. It needs to tenderize, right? I'll make those from some plumbing pipe. Well, not pipe, but foam for pipe insulation and I cut a short piece in half diagonally. I apply contacts of it to the edges, and when that sets, I can fold the sides in to make a spike. Trim the base so the spike can sit flat, and contact cement them to the front of the hammer. While I waited for the contact cement to dry so I could stick on the spikes, I drilled holes in the hammer and super glued in some lag bolts, just so the hex heads were showing. And I used my rotary tool to grind off the letters from the head of the bolts. Now it just needs paint. So I have a couple of coats of spray paint. What I ended up doing was a primer coat and then I did a brown coat and then I went back over it and sprayed it with some black, real splotchy. I didn't want it to be a good single color coat of black because this is the beginning of my color texture. All the other colors will be acrylic craft paints. I dry brush the rocket nozzle with some silver paint and both of those strips as well. The red acrylic doesn't fully cover the spray paint, but that's okay because it looks dirty now. I add silver and other highlights onto most of the pieces because this is supposed to look worn and post-apocalyptic. I watered down black paint and dark it in all of the shadow areas and add some to the cloth grip and around the straps. Lastly, I sponge paint some brown over the hammer. It's just the first coat of rust because then you sponge on a second coat of orange paint, which really makes it look like a rust color. I drill pilot holes and screw on a plastic mesh as a heat shield. And I can super glue on that yellow thing that's off to the side, which is also delightfully dirty. And super glue the fuel line from the tanks to the nozzle, running it through the plastic tube that I put under the strap. This fuel line is just a length of old audio wire. All right, that's all the details I wanted to add for my rocket propelled sledgehammer. I'm going to let the glue set up and I'll hit it with a, a clear sealer which will take down the shine and just make it a matte color. While I was working on the hammer, Joe started working on the Pip-Boy. He removed all the stickers from the Pip-Boy and saved them. 
He can put the back on after painting. He protects the fabric parts with some blue tape and spray paints the Pip Boy with white primer. The colors it had were kind of good to start with, but Joe wanted to start over with colors that he could actually control. Everything is painted with acrylic craft paints, building up colors and layers to match the art in the game. The Pip Boy prop has a lot of cast in detail, but painting and weathering can really bring it all out. But that's looking so much better than it was. Oh yeah, because this was all just brown right. with a little bit of like uh, black Blotchy. and <laughs> in it. Yeah, the, the yellow and black stripes were not very well done. And I think that it looks good. I think it looks great. Thank you. So. After fully weathering the Pip-Boy, Joe put the stickers back on, but one of them no longer color matched. So we printed a custom water slide decal and replaced the stat, item, data labels with new ones he created. It sounds like this was done quickly, but Joe spent all day repainting this Pip-Boy 2000. To help me upgrade the vault suit, my friend Felicia came over to lend her expertise. So thank you for helping me. I, I asked you over because what I want to do is take the Vault Boy suit and turn it into an actual Vault Dweller's suit. Okay. Do you, feel, do you feel up to that, Felicia? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, this is actually a really good start, but there's more details that I, that I want to add to it. I'm actually impressed that it's got uh, individual pieces for the yellow. I thought this was all going to just be printed. Or silk screened on, so it's slightly dimensional. So, so I want to replace this with the, the gold lame skirt that I also picked up at Party City because I'm seeing a lot of the vault suits have a gold lame trim. I'd like to replace the 76 that's on the back with, with gold as well. And the other thing is instead of Velcro closure in the back, I would rather sew that up and then put a zipper down the front. And I've actually got a large brown zipper. This is just out of a piece of luggage or something from the thrift store. Okay. So, is think it's all doable. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. I think the first thing we probably should do is separate the top from the bottom. Okay. So that we're working on just the top. We both worked on the costume, removing the bottom half and both of the sleeves. Let's talk about the sleeves first. Vault suits have leather cuffs on the arms because it's where you wear your pit boy. Felicia made a paper pattern and I cut two pieces of leather from an old leather skirt. There's also padding that goes on the upper arm. I make some pad shapes from craft foam and contact cement. Then with the front of the pad covered in contact cement, Felicia simply presses the pad into the inside of the sleeve. I mark the center line of the pad and she ironed a center line of the fabric so it all glue in correctly. Pressing the fabric into the glue gets the dimensional shape very easily. The leather will be added on and the pad will get top stitched when the sleeves get attached to the top. We add a set of larger pads just above the knees and these were made the same way the arms were. But most of the work is gonna happen on the top. The gold skirt is inside out. And then this curve is the same curve as this curve. It's the same length as the piece we did. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it kind of cuts off this, but I was only planning on doing this part. Doing just this part and then adding this in as a separate piece? As this piece that's yeah. already tubed that's that wide. And technically, I think this goes all the way around, but I don't care. Cut up the skirt and get the gold chest piece. She sews in gold right over the yellow, keeping it tucked under the blue of the jumpsuit, and then adds in the front zipper, which matches the suit in the game. I traced the 76 that was in the back of the Vault Boy suit and cut out a set from craft foam. Then we used contact cement to fix more gold lame over the numbers, wrapping the fabric over the sides of each number. Felicia had already fixed the back seam, closing it up. Now we just needed to top stitch the numbers right over the printed ones, which completes the back of the suit. The sleeves have been closed and Felicia pins them back onto the shoulders and sews them all back together. We have a top with gold trim and a working zipper. She cut a length of elastic and added it to the back seam, which will gather the extra fabric in the back and smooth out the front a little. Then sew the legs back on. So it's a brand new vault suit. It's shiny. It's new. Now we need to make it, make it look a little weathered. It has little knees. Has knee pads. Has shoulder pads. Has a proper zipper to get in. Very cool. Yay! Yeah, big time yay. Yeah. That looks good. Got my arm in the way. 
It does look good. Thank you very, very much. Today it ran a little longer than anticipated, but I really appreciate all of your help with getting this sewn together properly. Thank you very much, Felicia. You're very welcome. It's very cool. Now you don't want your vault suit to look new. That wouldn't be proper. I use more craft paint and add weathering and shadows over the whole thing, even around the numbers that are on the back. And when you have paint spill accidents, they're no big deal. Just spray them with water and wipe them off. So what I want to do for the last piece on this costume is a shoulder pad, the big post-apocalyptic shoulder pad. What I could do is make one out of EVA foam and paint it. That was my original plan, but I was looking around and found that I had a couple of pieces of old hard rawhide le leather left over from a previous costume. So something I modified for somebody else. So I'm just going to use these because they're perfect. To mount these, I will take a foam knee pad. This is like the most budget knee pad you can get at a DIY store. This will be the actual cut for the shoulder and I'll glue the, the shoulder pads on top of it. And it's got a spot for the strap to go through to help hold it all together. To do the straps, I, I can use old belts from the thrift store, but what I wanted to try was reusing the straps from a pair of the Roman sandals I got from Party City and just sew them to some backpack strapping to make them a little stronger. Then I got some belts and buckles I'll add to it. First thing to do is take your new pair of sandals and cut the straps off. Then I simply sewed the vinyl strap right over the backpack webbing. I did it to all four straps that came with the sandals. This is more than I'm going to need, but it was easy enough to do. The finished strap fits right through the slot in the knee pad. I sew a ring on the end of the strap coming from the shoulder and add two more straps to go to the belt that I'll make next. The back of this harness is made just like the front. For a little extra detail, I'm going to add a couple of D-rings in the left front strap. I sew a square X right above the top ring and another in the middle between them. Then finish with a third square X under the lower D-ring. Good. All the detail it needs in the front. I have an old leather belt that I can use for the belt, but it needs attachments for the shoulder pad. I sew leather over more backpack strap and cut a hole out in the center that's for a belt buckle. I fold it over and then sew the top and the bottom shut. Repeat that four times and you have buckles to adjust the shoulder harness. The backpack straps and the Roman sandal straps are plastic, so I can use my wood burning tool to melt holes for the straps so the buckles can attach. The belt is leather and it's too big for Joe and Felicia, so I cut new holes in the belt every inch or so. All the belts and straps are done, so I can contact cement those big leather pieces onto the foam knee pad, and I have the shoulder pad and harness completed. I just want to say thank you once again to Party City and to Reed Pop for giving us the challenge and the idea to take a Halloween costume and upgrade it to a cosplay. And we really did it with just adding a few little pieces, a lot of paint, and some little time and effort. And Joe, thank you. I really appreciate all of your help, both with getting the pit boy done and some of the ideas that you had. It was pretty cool. This was a lot of fun to do. I love painting stuff, so thank you so much for letting me do this. You did an excellent job on the sledgehammer. Thank you. It this is was, my thing. It was just this black hammer and you made it something really unique and awesome. And you and Felicia, the amount of work that you guys did on the costume itself with the gold and the straps and the shoulder pad, You're right. you guys put in a lot of hours. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Felicia. I really appreciate your help. Yeah. yeah. You guys did great with that. So it, it was, it was definitely worth doing. 
Thank you. I think it was worth doing too. And I hope that this inspires you to go and look to see what you can find at the Halloween Isle and the Costa Miles of Party City and what you can put together. Because remember, you don't have to just do Fallout. You don't have to just do a specific property. That's what I like to do. I like making things to look like stuff that people are used to seeing. But some of the fun of cosplay is mixing stuff up. Go and find like a superhero and mix it up with uh, steampunk or, or make like a spaceman, but make like a caveman version of a spaceman. Do whatever because the creativity is the best part and the creativity is what people really enjoy. So I hope this has inspired you to put something together and remember that there's going to be lots of different ways that you can make a cosplay from stuff that you can find in the costume aisle, but this is how Odin makes. You're irritated. Right. What? Again? Yeah.